This is the brand new Oyster 495. Literally just came out earlier this year. It's been a massively successful yacht for them already. They sold 15 of these and they actually build them. We're in Southampton at the moment. They build these just across the water in Hive. They've got a purpose-built factory and they're building up to building one a month of these. So it's going to be a, a really popular boat and I'm going to take you on board and give you the full tour and you can see exactly why this has been such a hit. So we'll come right back to the transom first of all. We've got a retracting bathing platform that telescopes back in so it comes flush and then just extends out when you're swimming. This colour, it's like a mint green colour, is actually a wrap. They're using this one to show the boat off around various marinas and ports and so they thought they'd put a distinctive colour on it but it's actually white underneath I'm told. This is interesting, this is a drop down section of the guardrail so normally it fits in here and it just rotates down through 180 degrees and gives us access up onto the boat. We'll see that a bit clearer on the other side because the other one on the other side is up. So we'll step up here, we'll wander around to the aft area first of all, it's a very busy river, the Hamble River, big princess going out there. Life raft is on here. EPIRB, all the safety equipment is here. We've got hydraulic backstay on this one. That's that uh, bathing platform that I was mentioning. And if we look down here, this is very much an oyster thing. These are all about cruising. So you get a really big lazarette. So for things like paddle boards or folding bikes or all the kind of stuff that you want to find a home for, that's where they would live. These hatches here you'll see are over the aft cabin and we'll see the inside of that very shortly. We'll take a stroll around the decks first of all and then we'll look at the cockpit and then we'll go on inside. This is very much an oyster thing, these corner seats here, they're lovely. And you've got these beautiful flush decks all the way around the boat. Electric winches here. In fact, the sheets for the foresail come back down through these little rings here so that they're kept clear of the side decks, you don't have loads of ropes over the side decks. This is the side boarding gate folded up so you can see exactly how that just drops down and gives you the access that we had on the other side. Very much an oyster thing, you've got the sort of deck saloon style windows all the way around so you're not quite so buried in the hull as you often are with this style of boat and you'll see the effect of that when we go inside shortly. We'll carry on forward again as well. These opening windows here, it's all about getting ventilation through the boat, getting plenty of airflow. Come right up here, this one has got a rather stunning black carbon fibre rig. So the mast and the boom, all carbon fibre. Standard is uh, white painted aluminium, but that is, is rather special. It's got the roller furling into the mast, so that just unfurls out, obviously, when you want to use it. There's an option of slab reefing. Every single one actually has gone out with the roller furling, I'm told, though, because these are often run by families. People just want ease of use, and that is really, really easy. If we carry on forward again, you've got the roller furling for the foresail and the anchor winch is up here. The other thing that's up here actually is another of those really big lockers. If we flip these catches here. There we go. So extra sails, warps, all that kind of stuff can all live in there. This chunky big deck gear on here as well, it's all so lovely. That does look cool, doesn't it? <laughs> That's all the oyster staff that I have displaced. Sorry, chaps. You can come back on in a minute. And that's how she looks this side. Let's head on back. I'll show you the cockpit. And then I say, we'll head on inside. So you've got the two pedestals here. The reason that you have two pedestal positions and two wheels is because when the boat is under sail, you're normally on a reach. So you have the wind on one side and it's coming that way. So the boat is heeling over that way. The sails are all down this side and clearly from this side you don't get such a good view so on that side you get to see past everything and you're higher up when you tack the wind is on this side everything's leaning this way sails are down this side and of course then from this position you've got a great view forward and if you come up here you can see all of the sail controls so main sheet in and out the out haul in and out the main furling in and out so everything is hydraulically controlled across there. I think the only thing that isn't hydraulically controlled are the sheet winches and they're electric. Um, and you've also got uh, the jib furling here and so forth, compass here, the wheel is here. If we look on the other side, multifunction display of course, we're going to look at one of those downstairs because they're rather interesting on this boat. On this side this is a bit more geared up for when you're under power manoeuvring. So your engine controllers here, your bow and your stern thruster controllers are here. 
and so forth. Autopilot on this one as well, of course, fusion stereo, another compass, all the usual bits and pieces. And then the cockpit is here. Now these are about two meters long, so loads of room to stretch out. It's just an amazingly busy river, isn't it? Fantastic. And the table in the center here, of course, these leaves lift up to make a much larger table so you can dine around that if you want to. And then finally, the other thing you've got in here is somewhere to keep the champagne cool. So that is a little refrigerator for your drinks. So that is the exterior. We're going to head on down below. Now there are washboards that come up from here to here and then the, that slides across to meet them so you can secure the cabin when you need to. I'm going to slip my shoes off and we'll head on down. There's more of this Brooks and Gatehouse information here. So depth and boat speed and wind indication, all that kind of thing is all there. And then if we drop down here, well then we've got this wonderful saloon area and you can see now how those big windows we saw on the outside work when you're in here. So you're not quite as buried down in the boat as you normally are with a sailing boat. There's this raised section here. Also underneath here, things like fuel tanks and batteries and all that kind of stuff is all tucked away underneath there. But it does mean you get a lot more light into here and those are those opening ones at the front so you get plenty of ventilation. The other thing you notice in here is you'll see gaps around the place like this and the reason for that is because there's no air conditioning grills they just use these big sections to gently waft cool air out so it looks a lot more discreet and it gives you much more diffused air. This seating area here there's the table as you can see which unfolds so that just opens right out if you want it to but you can also drop that it's on a telescopic leg there is a cushion that go on there there's a tv that rises up over there if you want a nice day bed to relax or an evening watch a movie or whatever that's the perfect place to do it. If we go over to this side, obviously more seating as you can see. There's blinds that come down over all of these. So that tucked away underneath here, like this. And then the galley is back here as well. So what they've done with this is they configured it. So when you're under sail and the boat's heating, you can wedge yourself into here and you can deal with the cooking or whatever else. Of course, it's a gimbaled oven. So when the boat's on a hill, that stays level. If we come right back, you've got things like these are the displays for the fridge and the freezer. You've also got gas alarms, so LPG alarms, carbon monoxide alarm, that's all there. These are nicely configured. Look at this. So these are designed so that the plates stay put. Obviously in a sailing boat, that's really quite important because when you're healing over, you don't want to be piled up in one corner. And all this is the proper oyster stuff. I don't know how else we'll pick it up, just where my thumb is there. It's a very discreet oyster logo. So they, again, all have their own little box. Let's put that back like so. Um, microwave in here as well as the uh, gas cooking. So you've got both. There's a generator on board, so that will run even when you're out at sea. We've got the fridge back here. So that's another fridge alongside that cockpit one. There's a freezer separate to that, which I'll show you. And there's a dishwasher in here as well to keep your champagne clean. Load more storage down here, over here. I'm not going to open it all, obviously, but you get the idea. That one there is cutlery. And again, I don't know how you can see it, but you've got this little discreet oyster logo is right down the bottom there. Hopefully you can pick that up. And these are all soft clothes. Like so. This woodwork is owner choice. This is a, a light oak, but if you wanted walnut, for example, if you want a darker finish, then you can have it. And again, these panels and the, um, uh, the upholstery, all of that kind of stuff. This again is oak, but it's... Um, it's stained grey, so you get that contrast. It looks rather nice. And these sorts of things as well, you can choose as well. Let's press on a bit further. We will go forward first of all, I think. This mast, normally with a the mast, they wrap this in the same sort of upholstery as this. Because this one's carbon fibre, they've made a feature of it. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? That goes right down and into the keel. And if we come on forward again, we have got the VIP guest cabin up here in the bow really like cabin because they've put twin big hatches they of course open so again that all important air and ventilation through big hull windows around the place as well blinds that go over all of these so they've just come across like that and there's the mosquito blinds as well if we look in behind here if i unclip this door because these all clip back like that then there are hanging lockers and more storage about the place drawers underneath the bed all that kind of stuff so there's plenty of places to put things away.
And these are all air conditioned incidentally. So you've got separate air conditioning areas for this forward area for the saloon and for the owner's cabin back aft. Now there's cabin three on here as well. That's at this end. That's in here. Again, storage is down here. I won't open it all, but you get the idea. And these, I mean, brilliant for kids, brilliant for storage, but they are full size adult beds. So you can sleep adults in there. So she will sleep six quite comfortably. And even in this cabin, again, you've got the opening hatch overhead. We'll come around here because we'll find the day heads. So these two cabins share this one. You've got the loo and the sink and you've got the shower there as well with a door that comes across and the hatch up above and a wave in the mirror. And then we'll come on back. That's that big seating area that we saw. And then we'll come back down here this is very interesting because what you've got here, of course, chart area is here, switch gear, stereo. Um, this one is actually um, a multifunction display, so we can put that onto charts, VHF radios here, generator controllers here. But there's a sea zone system that controls the whole boat. And what Oyster decided was that they thought that was a bit small, so they had their own tailor made app to link to it. And so if we go into this one, you can go into, for example, domestic systems. So you can see what's on and off and switch it on and off indeed from here. You can go into uh, AC system, same sort of thing. And you can see the voltage that's coming in, the currents being used. We can go into uh, DC systems, similar sort of thing. You can see the voltage, state of charge. Um, engine instrumentation is on there. Generator instrumentation is on there. Tank levels are on there. But the one I want to show you particularly is lighting, because if we go into here, this is great. Currently it's in valet mode. What that means is the whole boat is lit up as bright as possible. But you can go into a chill mode and that dims everything down so it's much more relaxed. Uh, you can go into a night mode and what that does is turn all the main lights off and just give you red lighting. You can see it down here so that it, you've got a glow in here but you don't lose your night vision. My favourite one is leave boat mode because if you hit the leave boat mode, I won't do it right now, I'll go back to valet mode. Leave boat mode turns all the lights on so you can find all your stuff, get it all locked up, walk away, it gives you about five minutes, and then shuts everything off. That's genius. Very, very impressed with that. What is also quite clever is the fact that all of this stuff on here, it is all electronically switched, but the really important stuff has got proper circuit breaker switching as well. So things like the radar scanner, the VHF, the windlass, the balance down thruster, those are all on proper physical switches. So even if that all went down, you still got complete control of the boat. Same down here, 230 volt AC distribution, all controlled um, with physical switches. The other thing you've got here, there's a water maker built in down there so it can supply its own fresh water. And there is a freezer here and a washer dryer lives in here. I mean, these sorts of boats are all about just spraying off for, you know, months or, or even years at a time. So having all this stuff is really important. Over on this side, then we've got the engine access. Like so, that is a Yanmar diesel. I think it's 110 horsepower. Checks notes. Yes, it is. Look at that. Now that's giving you about nine knots flat out and cruising at about eight knots. And in fact, that's pretty much the sailing speed of the boat as well. They say that in the passage planning, they reckon on about eight and a half knots. I mean, you might get a touch more out of her when things are going really well, but that's the sort of cruising speeds that you can expect. This is on a sail drive. So the power comes out, goes straight down into a leg, folding propeller on the back of there, all nice and simple and straightforward. And things like your filters, your diesel filter and so on, all nice and easy to get to. Same here, you can see the engine strainer and the generator strainer are all where you can reach them nice and easily. And in fact, talking generator, that's down there. There's a separate doorway into that. And that, I think I'm right in saying, is an eight kilowatt. So that's for all your domestic uh, 230 volt systems, your air conditioning, your freezer, your dishwasher, all that kind of stuff. It can all be driven from there if you're not plugged into shore power. Big, thick doors here for plenty of soundproofing. I mean, obviously, let's do that the right way around. <laughs> Well, otherwise, will it? Obviously, the idea is that you sail most of the time, but if you do need to motor, then you want to keep it nice and quiet as much as you can. So that is that. That's the doorway into where the generator section is, but we're going to press on back a little bit further because this is the owner's cabin. 
again a lot of owner selection going on here so you can choose the woodwork you can choose the upholstery you can choose the headboard across the back all able to be selected however you want and in fact you can see these are for lee cloths here so when the boat's healing over you can put lee cloths in so you can be tumbling out of bed very much an oyster feature is the three vertical hull windows that really makes oysters stand out and gives you a great view out of the Hamble River from in here. You've got uh, your 230 volt power and your USB chargers, all that kind of thing. Light switches by the bed, you've got drawers, there's a big wardrobe over there behind that door, got concealed lighting up there. Actually the lighting is quite interesting because you've got presets here. That top one lights everything up but then there's dimmers, if you press and hold it it dims, but then you can push the next one down and it just drops everything back to a sort of a very laid back low level setting next one back again drops it back even further to like night uh, vision and then the bottom one turns everything off so that's pretty clever that's that wardrobe in behind here i will show you i've got to show you everything i can't help myself there we go thusly drawers underneath storage around there all the kind of stuff you'd expect these are these hatches that we saw back aft as we came on so again it's all about light and ventilation there's the tv in here as well of course and then we go over on this side this is the ensuite let's flick the light on there we go very nicely done you've got your electric flush loo the sink is here bit of storage underneath and in the mirror and then you've also got then the separate shower cubicle that's in here and you can see it actually steps down because we're dropping down underneath the cockpit there so it maintains the uh, the standing headroom even there little window that opens for more ventilation nicely done isn't it nicely done oyster we approve very much and clearly so everybody else given how many they sold that's brilliant okay let's come back out of here We've just about covered it. Let's go and sit up here at this wonderful, comfy looking saloon area. And I will sit here and I will say massive thanks to Oyster Yachts. They've invited me up to see this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And we will, of course, look forward to catching you on one of these real soon. Take care. Bye bye.